Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. In this video, I'm going to show you my black and white luminar workflow. We're going to start out with an unprocessed color image that looks like this. We're going to use Luminar 4 to process it in black and white, and we're going to end up with an image that looks like this. Before we begin, just let me say real quick that as you can see, I'm working on a Mac. In past versions of Luminar, there were some cosmetic, hotkey, and even some feature differences between the Mac version and the Windows version. Now, I haven't used Luminar 4 on the Windows machine, so I don't know if there's any specific differences I should make sure you're aware of. With that in mind, what I encourage you to do is before you purchase Luminar 4, Download it for free. They have a fully working 15-day trial. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website where you could download that fully working 15-day trial and try it out and make sure that it works the way you expect it to work. Then, once you do purchase it, in the description below this video, you'll see a discount code and you could save a few dollars when you do buy it. All right, we're going to be working on this image. I want to... Uh, process it and convert it into black and white with Luminar. This was just a normal, nothing special shot, shot with a Nikon camera. And again, in the description below the video, I'll have um, all the gear info and exposure info for this shot. Now, what I like to do, now first I should say, there's no really right or wrong way to go about doing this. You could uh, kind of create your own workflow for uh, black and white processing, but this is the way I found works best. Usually I crop first. Now this specific image, I don't think I need to crop at all. I like the composition right out of camera. So what I do is I go to the light tab first and I adjust a few sliders here before the black and white conversion. Specifically for this shot, as I look at it, the Darker parts of the image are pretty dark. I obviously exposed more towards the sky. So the sky is more properly exposed, but the rest of it is a little dark. So I jump right down to shadows and I'll open up shadows quite a bit. Then I'll go to highlights and I'll, I'll rein those in a little bit. Then I'll go to advanced settings and I want to adjust the whites and blacks. And the way I do this is I actually just look at the histogram, usually right down here. And you can see on the right side of the histogram, this um, represents the highlights. You can see how there's a big gap. So what I'll do is I'll go to the white slider and I'll move it to the right and I'll push that over until there's not a gap there any longer. Now another way you could do this, I'll reset that by double clicking on it, is hit the J key on your keyboard. The J key turns on the clipping indicators. And what you'll find then is if when you're adjusting whites, let's say, and I move it to the right, if I go too far, I'll start to get some red overlaid on the image. That means I'm clipping the highlights. If you're clipping the highlights, that means that there isn't any detail there any longer. You just made them so bright, all the detail is wiped away. So you prefer not to do that, of course. So you'll back that down until that red is just gone. Now with those clipping indicators still on by hitting the J key, and by the way, if you don't like hitting the J key, the clipping indicators are up here on the histogram and there are these little triangles. These are the shadows and these are the highlights. And you could click those on individually to see the issue. Now with blacks, I'll move that to the left. And you can see as I move it, if I move it too far, you'll start to see blue overlaid on the image. That means we're crushing the shadows when you crush the shadows, they're absolute black. There's no detail there. So typically, you want to probably back that off a little. Now, I like to have absolute black in my landscape images. I think it gives my image a little more tonal depth. I have tones going from absolute black all the way to almost absolute white. That's the way I like to do it. Everyone's different. So I would adjust those so I have just a little bit of blue in those darkest areas. Then I'll hit the J key on the keyboard again to turn off the clipping indicators. So you can see that I've only adjusted four sliders and we've done quite a bit to the image. There's before and there's after, and there's before and there's after. So, so far, so good. Now at this point, 
what I actually like to do is look at profiles. Sometimes some of the black and white profiles that come with the camera and or with Luminar look really nice in black and white. So I'll go to the profile drop down and I'll click there and I'll go to the camera monochrome and you can see there's the monochrome version with a yellow filter on the lens. So that's as though you were shooting film and you put a yellow filter, black and white film, and you had a yellow filter on the lens. A green filter is, a uh, yellow filter, by the way, is really good for all around types, uh, all different types of photography. A green filter is really nice if you're doing portraiture. A red filter is really for dramatic landscapes. And we'll let that go. And you can see how the sky looks really cool there. Um, but with that said, I think we'll stay with the Luminar default for now because I want to show you some of the more uh, black and white conversion features that are in Luminar. But I want to make you aware to definitely check out those profiles because actually that red filter, I kind of like that. So I would probably run with that. But we'll go with that for now. What I will do is I will add a little bit of contrast with the Smart Contrast Slider. Not a lot. So I'm done with the light uh, tab. So now I'll do t uh, the black and white conversion and I'll go here. Now I'll just click this button, convert to black and white. Now we have two tabs, luminance and saturation. If you're just doing a straight black and white conversion, you're really just going to deal with the luminance tab. If you go to the saturation tab, what you're actually going to do is you're going to reintroduce the color back into the black and white shot. So that's handy if you're doing some type of selective color, but in this case, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to stay with the luminance tab. And what this will do is you'll affect the tone or the brightness levels of the specific colors in the image. For example, we know that there was blue in the sky. If I jump right down to that blue slider, if I move it to the right, I'll make any blue that was in the color image brighter. If I move it to the left, I'll make any blue that was in the color image darker. So. I'll make the sky a little more dramatic by taking blue luminance level down. And we could start at the top. And what I'll do is I'll just move them left and right and see if they do anything. Now this image was relatively limited as far as the colors were that were in the shot. So most of these sliders won't do too much. Uh, typically, I often like, especially on landscape shots that have trees and grass in them to move the yellow to the right and green to the left. I, I they, again gives my image a lot of tonal range it will make uh, the yellow components of the green grass and the trees brighter but it may then moving the green slider down makes that same kind of green component darker so in this case there really isn't any uh you know green grass or green trees for that matter uh cyan uh you can move that will affect the sky as well and magenta, probably nothing, right? So there's not a lot here. Now we also could edit the mask. So if you just wanted to, uh, again, do selective color, you could use uh, the mask and mask away the black and white from specific parts of the image or mask in the black and white to specific parts of the image if you prefer. So I like the black and white conversion so far. I think it looks pretty cool. Now I'll close that. Now next, I like to deal with uh, noise reduction and detail. So I'm going to go to noise reduction first and I like to zoom in and I'm zooming in on the sky and you can see hopefully in the video there is a fair amount of noise. So I'm going to go to the denoise slider. I'm going to open up advanced settings right away. There's only one slider there, boost. So typically what I'll do here um, is the color denoise, I should add, you would think color denoise doesn't affect the black and white image as much, but sometimes in a black and white image you will see not color noise, but there's going to be grain there, and it's really color noise. And if you move that to the right, you may see it move. Now, in this case, we're not. But don't just ignore that slider, even if you converted it to black and white. Move that to the right and see if it reduced the noise at all. In this case, it isn't. But just want to make you aware of that. I'll move. What I typically do, um, color or luminance to noise goes from 0 to 100. So I, I typically would like plop it right in the middle at 50. And I'll look, and it removed the noise. So then what I'll do, now I'll leave boost where it's default position at 25. Then what I'll do is I'll go down like another 10 to 40. And I'll look. And I, the noise is still gone. So then I'll go down to 30. 
and then wait for it to render and um, noise is pretty much gone there might be just a tiny bit but i'll go to 25 this time and it's just starting to get a tiny bit of noise in there so i'll go to boost and i'll inch that up to like 28 30 in there somewhere that looks good so i think the noise is gone so um the noise is done Next, I want to sharpen and enhance detail in the image. Now, there's a couple different ways you could go about doing that. We have the Details Enhancer filter, and here we could enhance the detail of the small, medium, and large components of detail. We also could sharpen the image outright with that sharpen slider. But also, there's AI Structure, and Structure does kind of a similar thing. It's probably more akin to Clarity in Lightroom. But with AI Structure, if you have a person in the shot, it is smart enough to know where the person is and it will not adversely affect their skin or their eyes or their lips or anything like that. Whereas the detail enhancer is going to enhance detail everywhere. So if you have a person in the shot, you probably will prefer to use AI structure, but AI structure could quickly make your image look pseudo HDR. So if you go a little bit too far, it starts to look really HDR-like, and you may not want that. On the other hand, if you want more of an ethereal look, you could go to the left, and you could give it more of an ethereal uh, look as well. Now, again, if there was a person in the shot, you probably wouldn't see that affect their skin or their face at all. Uh, when I move that, it's just going to affect everywhere around the person. Now, for this image, I don't think I want to use AI structure, at least not to begin with. I'm going to go to the Details Enhancer, and we have small, medium, and large details. And the way I like to do this is I do it in reverse order. Um, I go to large detail first, and I move that to the right. Um, because I found that the large detail in most landscape images will affect the least amount of the image. Whereas the small detail tends to affect everything. So you can see that the small detail is affecting all the land. It's affecting the clouds and everything. Whereas that large detail isn't affecting the sky as much as it may be affecting the logs down here in the rocks and the water. So um, I'll start with large and move that to the right until I like it. Then I'll move up to medium. And then I'll go to small. And typically this is just my taste. I tend to move larger more than medium and medium more than small. It's just the way it ends up happening. Now we also could sharpen the image as well. I like to zoom in uh, where, you know, I want to sharpen and kind of move that to the right a little bit as well. Took a second to render, but that looks pretty good. Now, if there was any part of the image I didn't want the detail enhancement or the sharpening to occur, I would go to advanced settings and I could go to details protection. I could move that to the right and it will start to remove detail from specific parts and details masking as well uh, so you don't want to add detail like to the sky you could move that to the right and it will start to remove it from the larger swaths of area uh, that don't have really any detail the reason why you may want to do that is because you'll find when you're enhancing detail and sharpening the image you're enhancing any noise that might have been there and we already got rid of the noise so it's not an issue and you have uh, similar issues with sharpening. We have sharpening masking there as well. We also have sharpening radius. In this case, uh, the default position is fine, but you may find that if um, you're sharpening something that's a little more delicate, maybe the petals of a rose or something like that, you may want to pull sharpening radius more to the left. And just it will give it a little better look and really affect the texture of the rose petals. Uh, as opposed to when you're more to the right, it's more of a broad sharpening of the edges of the uh, petals of the rose. That makes sense. So I'm going to leave that at the default position. And I think that looks pretty good right there. And we could go to Landscape Enhancer. And if there was any haze, dehaze would work here as well. Um, golden Hour, because it's black and white, you could see what it does. It just kind of makes the image brighter. A foliage enhancer, uh, again, if there was some grass in the shot and some trees, foliage enhancer would affect the luminance levels of those um, 
objects in this scene, but right here there isn't anything there, so it's not doing anything. And then um, at advanced settings, we have foliage view, which isn't applicable to uh, this black and white image. So I'm going to jump right down to vignette. And um, I'm going to just do a straight vignette right in the middle. And I'm going to use a darker vignette. So I'll move this to the left, and you can see how it starts to kind of darken the edges. And the reason why I like to do that is um, humans, when they look at an image, will tend to look at the brightest parts first. So if you darken around the edges, it kind of will pull everyone's attention more towards the middle of the image. And generally speaking, uh, an image will more be more pleasing to look at if there isn't bright stuff at the edges, because then people's gaze tends to look away. They look off the image, and you want them to kind of center on the middle. So with the vignette filter in Luminar, you could do that by using the darker vignette. You could affect the size uh, with that slider. I'm going to leave it right at the default position. But what I do like to do is go to advanced settings. And sometimes I like to boost it a little bit more by adding an inner light. That just brightens up the middle a little bit more. And I just think that adds to it as well. Now there is a before the vignette and after the vignette. And before and after. So I think that works. Now we could go through some of the other um, panels as well, the creative panel. I don't think there's anything there. You may want to check out Dramatic and see if that does something that your image that you would like. I don't think so in this case. Um, even Mystical, maybe uh, if you want to kind of give it that ethereal look again, you could do that, but I think we're okay here. And then in the professional uh, panel, uh, there's advanced contrast, which you may want to add. Like you could add contrast just to the highlights, highlight areas or the midtones or the shadows. I like the contrast to the shadows a little bit. That kind of looked pretty cool. And so on. So um, I think I am done. So this is before and this is after. So that's how I go about converting a color image into black and white and processing it fully in Luminar 4. And again, there is no right or wrong way to do this. This is just the way I go about doing it. And I hope this helps you uh, kind of develop a workflow of your own. Again, be sure to check out Luminar's or Skylum's 15-day um, free trial version of Luminar. It's fully working. There's a link in the description below this video so you could check it out. Also, I have a discount code down there so you could save when you actually do purchase Luminar 4. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.